Welcome to Our Girl Relationships. On this channel, we talk about problems people face in their day-to-day -day lives. Let's start with the video. It took me a while to believe that love actually exists. And there are still good people on earth who don't just want to use you to their advantage. After my husband cheated on me with his secretary and left with her, I no longer believed in love. It was a very painful experience for me because I thought we loved each other, but I guess our love wasn't enough. We both made sacrifices, but I did the most to ensure that we had a family. I gave my time, my resources, and sometimes even sacrificed my ambitions for our family. I didn't hold anything back and let him know that I could be trusted and there was nothing I couldn't do for him. My love was not enough because he left me. He left me broken. I was lost for so long and I didn't know where to start to piece my life back together. The most painful part wasn't only that he left me, but who he left me with. He destroyed our marriage for a secretary. He was attracted to her youth and beauty. I'll be 50 this year and he will be 55. I gave him my youth, but that wasn't enough for him. He wanted more. He started coming home late and wouldn't take certain calls when I was around him. He didn't have time for our child and I anymore, and he wasn't interested in their welfare. One day, a friend of mine called to ask me how, how everything was going with my husband, and I wondered why she would ask. So after replying in the positive, I probed to find out why she was really asking. She said she and her husband had gone on a date, and she saw my husband and his secretary, and they were not behaving formally at all. It looked like they were having a date as well. This confirmed some of my suspicions, but I didn't tell her anything about what had been going on in my marriage. Things got worse between us, and he became less and less interested in us. He either forgot or deliberately ignored my birthday and our anniversary a month later. At this point, I knew we were heading for a separation. I wasn't really a fan of divorce, so dreaded it with everything in me. One day, he just left and I tried several times to get to him, but I didn't get through. I finally gave up after about six months. I decided it was time to put an end to my misery. I knew that I needed help because of the way things were going, but I didn't know where to get help from or how to go about it. I tried various activities, joined different groups, tried sports to get it off my mind, but nothing worked until I accepted the fact that it was not my fault that my so-called husband had left me, and in fact, it was his loss, because I am an incredible person. I healed at my own pace and decided to forgive him and the secretary, even if they never asked for it and didn't deserve it in the first place. We had one kid together. I was low-key happy that it was just one because it would have been a lot on me to take care of all of them at once. My daughter is grown up and engaged to be married. I tried my best to ensure that she didn't feel similar to how I felt when I realized that my husband wasn't coming back. The secretary always seemed so nice to me. Little did I know that we were both sharing my husband. I hope no one, especially my daughter, has to go through what I went through. I got a call from an unknown number. I picked it up and the voice I heard shook me from my head to my toes. It was my husband and he told me that my daughter had invited him to her wedding and he was planning to attend but he wanted to know if I was okay with it because he didn't want to just show up without letting me know. I told him that it was my daughter's wedding and she could invite whoever she deemed fit. He apologized to me for leaving nine years ago and said that he really wanted to attend the wedding because he wanted to straighten things out with his family. He told me that he wanted his family back. It was the audacity and courage he had to say to me after he discarded us years ago without even a courtesy call or text. 
The only reason why I didn't blast him with every painful thing I could have possibly thought about was the bride who wanted her father there to walk her down the aisle. My daughter is very forgiving, so I think she also wanted us all to heal from the past. I simply said that he could come and he could also bring his secretary. He then told me that they were no longer together. I did a victory dance in my head, but I merely acknowledged what he said. My daughter apologized for not giving me heads up about her dad. She said that he had reached out to her a few weeks ago, and she didn't think so much of it until he kept pleading with her to forgive him, and he said that he wanted to become a part of our lives again. Because he realized that he made a stupid mistake, and he hurt us very badly. She wanted to see if things could actually get better between us, so she told him about our wedding and asked him to come. He then asked for my number and she gave it to him because she knew that if she told me, I wouldn't allow her to. So she knew that we had had nine years apart. She believed that something could still happen to mend our broken family. The day after he called me, his mistress called and asked me not to believe anything that he said because he was very broke and wanted to live off someone else. He had been living off her for the past three years and refused to get a job after his business didn't survive their move. She decided to stop giving him money, and some months ago, that was when he said he was leaving to go back to his family, who were doing well, and he knows his wife loves him too much and would definitely take him back. I wasn't surprised at this, but I also knew that she could be lying. He couldn't hurt me more than he already did, but I wouldn't let him destroy my daughter, who is too forgiving and pure for him. He used her to get to me, but I won't let him deceive me twice. I told off his mistress and behaved like I didn't believe her because I didn't want her coming back to me. I immediately informed my daughter and we decided to play along. We were not certain who was speaking the truth. Either way, the ball was in our court and we were going to play it to our advantage. He came back to the city two weeks before the wedding and when we saw each other, I was sure that I didn't love him anymore. He had killed it all by himself. This realization made it easier to go along with our plan. He couldn't look me in the eye with good reason. It was awkward, and all he did was apologize and ask what he could do to make it up to us. We told him that it was okay, then asked where his hotel was. He seemed a little disappointed that we asked him that, but he quickly composed himself. He said he would have to check into one when he left us. We bought him lunch and told him that we had to leave shortly after because we had a cake testing appointment. He asked if he could come along and we agreed. The cakes were divine. My favorite was the lemon poppy seed with lemon curd and Italian buttercream. I remember every bite that I took of that cake. After our appointment, we offered to drop him off at a hotel. He had the same look as before, but we pretended not to see it. We dropped him off at a hotel nearby and left. We didn't have much else to do for the day, but we didn't want him getting too comfortable with us. Our plan was to tie him out and give him no money. If he wanted us back, he should be the one spending on us and paying us back for his nine years of absence. The wedding was blissful. My daughter got married to the love of her life. I'm happy that my experience with her father didn't stop her from finding love for herself. I really hope that her marriage turns out way better than mine did. After the wedding, we didn't reach out to my husband and every time he reached out to us, we made up something. We wanted him to break and either realize that there was nothing we could do for him or tell the truth about why he came. I still live in the house that we both got, but I completed the mortgage and transferred the ownership to me. I was at home one evening and I heard a knock on the door. I wasn't expecting anyone, so I went to check who it was. It was my husband. The last person I wanted to see because I was feeling a little emotional at the time, thinking of how my daughter moved out of the house to start her own family, and I would be alone in our big house now. I let him in, even though my instincts were to ask him to leave immediately. He knelt down and started to cry. I could only think how good of an actor he was if he was doing all of this so that he could get money from me. He said that he couldn't imagine how much damage he had caused me. 
and I had every reason to hate him, but that he flew all the way here to make amends, and his fears were not going to stop him. I asked him to tell me why he was really here, and he said because he wanted his family back. Now that caused some rage. I asked him why his mistress told me that he was broke and coming to get money from me because he thought I loved him too much and would do whatever he wanted. I told him that he was right about me loving him too much and I was blinded by that love to the point where I sacrificed my happiness for his. But the person he knew who did that is dead and wasn't coming back. So if he thought he could exploit my child and I, then he was mistaken and could go back to where he was coming from. He seemed confused and asked for an opportunity to explain himself. He said that what really happened was that his business crashed because he was losing focus and making bad investments, plus his mistress was also conveniently stealing from him. He left her a year ago and she found out that he wanted to come back to make amends with us, and she didn't like that. She actually told him that she was going to make his life very difficult and make sure that he is never happy again. He admitted that for years he was looking at the wrong things and neglecting the ones that mattered until he lost them, but now would do anything to get us back, even if it took years for us to trust him again. He has moved back and has moved back to our city and made plans to stabilize his finances, but he never intended to take money from us. After all, he said, I see a possibility of forgiving him, but we would take it slow and no boundaries would be crossed. His business crashed because he couldn't think straight. Cheating just does something to you. He had a good family and he gave that up for a youthful exuberance. Sometimes I don't get men. Your daughter is an angel. I would have blocked him the first time he approached me. You don't play with people's lives and think you can come back whenever you feel like it. Next story. My son, eight, is autistic. We recently enrolled him in a mainstream school and he is excelling. He is participating more than ever in school. He's interacting with the other students. He's making friends, all of which he used to struggle with a lot. Every day he's making amazing progress with his education and I couldn't be prouder of him. He recently said when he grows up he wants to join the Air Force and fly planes. My husband and I have been supportive of this. He has always loved planes and if that is something he wants to do, we will do anything we can to help him achieve it. My mother-in-law was over today and he mentioned it. He also mentioned he wanted to move out when he's 18 and have his own house. She instantly started shitting on his ideas and telling him he probably won't be able to do it and he should think about doing something easier like working in a grocery store. She told him that he should also consider that he will probably not be able to live in independently and that we should consider some of the programs around the city for disabled people. I told my son he can do anything he wants to do in life and that I'll support him along the way to help him. My mother-in-law pulled me aside later and told me that I was setting him up for failure. He should know that he isn't like everyone else and he can't do what normal people can do and that I need to accept that he will never move out or if he does, it will be in a special home for people like him. I told my mother-in-law quite sternly that I am not going to break an eight-year-old's heart and tell him he can't do the one thing he has said he wanted to do. When I was eight, I wanted to be a singer, and as I grew up, I changed my mind. If he changes his mind as he grows up, that's fine. I told her that her views on him not being normal were incredibly ignorant, and if he can't function on his own in the world, then I will deal with it as he gets older. It's not something to worry about now. I told her that she can either stop putting him down for being autistic or leave and never come back. She got huffy with me and walked off, leaving shortly after. I've been dealing with calls all afternoon from my sister-in-law and brother-in-law saying I'm an a-hole for treating my mother-in-law like that and she was only trying to be realistic. So... 
AITIA for calling my mother-in-law out on her bullshit? Bravo for not buying her BS. Autism is not a prophecy of mediocrity. Some autistic people struggle in society and modest goals are sensible. Others do brilliantly. Many scientists and inventors show signs of autism. Richard Feynman is a hero of mine who may have been autistic. If your son is thriving in school and willing to work for his dreams, I look forward to seeing him soar. Your mother-in-law is T.A. for the reasons you push back. You're prioritizing your child's well-being, self-worth and self-esteem at a time when he really has no responsibility to be realistic. He should be encouraged. Children often grow to fit the molds we make for them. Next story. My ex-wife and I had very different views about spending money. After the birth of our daughter three years back, she started spending a lot of unnecessary money. I tried having discussions with her about budgeting, but she refused, saying that all of it was necessary for her. Some of the expenses were definitely necessary, such as mother's help, maid, cook, etc., and I had no problem with those kinds of expenses that would help her recover from childbirth. But there were others that were purely unnecessary and lavish, such as shopping, etc. It all reached a breaking point when she paid for her brother's college tuition from our joint account without even asking me if I was okay with it. I divorced her, and we got equal custody of our daughter along with me having to pay child support because our daughter was still very small. I had to also give her half of my business. I didn't want to run a business with her, so I sold my business and gave her half the money. I started a new business on my own, and it's doing pretty well now. Today, when I went to my mom's birthday party, my ex was also present. My ex-wife was a family friend, so she is still close to my parents despite our divorce. After dinner, my brothers and I were watching a movie. At that time, my mom came to me and told me she wants to speak to me in private. We stepped out of the house and my ex-wife was waiting for us there. My ex said that she lost all the money that she received from me upon divorce because her investments failed. She said that if I'd been more mature by running the business with her instead of selling it off and protecting just myself, that she wouldn't have been in this position now. She said that she's been evicted from her apartment and doesn't have the money even for a hotel room and told me that since I caused this, I should let her stay with me in my house. I refused and told her that she can leave our daughter with me for the time being and go stay with one of her friends or something. She started crying and my mom said I should be more kind to my ex considering she's a close family friend. She got close to about 300 grand in the final divorce settlement, including everything. A-I-T-I-A? Nah, screw that noise. This is your time to strike. I would get a lawyer and fight for custody. There's no way a woman that demonstrates that she is irresponsible with finances should be able to still have custody. She's not fit to take care of the child. Don't feel bad for her. I guarantee you that if the roles were reversed, they would tell you to deal with it. Tell her to figure it out. You're paying child support? She got half the business and you sold your half of it and gave her the money from it? Her inability to manage her finances, regardless of how she lost the money, is not your problem or responsibility. There are all kinds of programs that she can apply to for housing, food, etc., assistance. 